friends, my name is Shayla and today I'm here with a recommendation for you. With Tome Topple coming up here, I think it starts in about a week, I thought I would recommend some of my favorite tomes. Some of these are standalone, some of these are part of series. I do have three that are going to be manga omnibuses as they do allow omnibuses for your graphic novel category, so I thought I would just dig in and do these recommendations. So I'm going to start with the three manga omnibus recommendations and then I'll move into the books. So the first omnibus series that I'm going to recommend you guys try out is Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist is one of my favorite manga series of all time. It is so well done, it is so well written. This story rips you up one side and down the other with amazing characters and amazing journey all along the way. Primarily we follow the two Elric brothers, Alphonse and Edward. Edward and Alphonse perform a taboo with alchemy when they are young children. Edward ends up losing his arm and his leg while his brother Alphonse loses his entire body and his soul ends up t attached to a suit of armor. And their adventure begins from there. So these brothers are my favorites. Alphonse is my cinnamon roll as you guys hear me talk about all the time. This series is amazing. It talks about so many things. It talks about moral gray ground. It talks about the good, the bad, and the ugly of life, as well as all of the good, and looking for the good things in life, and how to, these brothers going on their journey to get their souls and bodies back intact. And it's beautiful, it's amazing. If you have not tried this series, I highly recommend you do. Next up on this list, we have Roroni Kenshin. Roroni Kenshin, Kenshin is a wandering samurai who is searching for peace in his life 10 years after these big wars. Anyways, because he is the legendary Batose, this legendary samurai from the war, everybody comes and tries to find him and take him down and become the new Batose. But Kenshin has sworn to no longer kill, and so this is about his journey meeting new people and seeking the peace in his life. I love Rurouni Kenshin. It's such a beautiful, fun manga series. It's definitely action-packed, and it's definitely not... PG rated. This is PG 13 rated R on its violence level. So if you're sensitive to that kind of stuff, definitely steer clear of this particular series, but it is an amazing series and I strongly recommend you check it out. And my last one is a contemporary recommendation and that is Orange by Ichigo Takano. This again is one of my favorite manga series of all time. This is a bigger omnibus volume, but it goes really quickly. This is essentially about a group of teenagers who end up receiving letters from their future selves trying to change their friend's fate. They, in the future, something terrible has happened to one of their friends, and so they're trying to rewrite history in a sense. And it is a beautiful coming-of-age slice-of-life story. This does have strong romance tones in it, so if you're not into romance, this is definitely not going to be your jam, but this is a beautiful story, and it definitely has a lot of talks about suicide, as one of the characters' mothers commits suicide very early on in the series. So just know that that is a strong tone in this book. So if you are sensitive, please be wary. But I do think this is a great dialogue on those kinds of things. So I do think it's very important and I do think it needs to be read. So I definitely and strongly recommend checking out Orange. So from here, we have seven novels slash series that I'm going to recommend and recommend to you guys. I hope you guys enjoy these recommendations as I haven't done any for a while. So I thought I'd just kind of throw some at you here at the end of the year, some of my favorites. So the first thing I'm going to mention is Brandon Sanderson in general. Generally his Cosmere books are all over 500 pages, so they are going to fall into your tome topple kind of books. For my personal thing, if you have not delved into Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere at all, I would strongly recommend picking up Warbreaker as your first, or Elantris. Either will work. Warbreaker is personally my favorite Brandon Sanderson novel to date. He's not going to give me my sequel for a very long time, so I'm very sad. But anyways, I got to talk to him at a signing recently. You'll see that video coming soon. But yes, I really strongly suggest Warbreaker. Warbreaker is about these two princesses who essentially end up swapping roles. So the oldest sister, Vivenna, is supposed has been raised her entire life and groomed to be the queen to the god king in the neighboring kingdom. Dad's playing favorites sends the rebellious young daughter Siri to go wed the God King instead of Vivenna, and things escalate from there. You do follow two other perspectives. Vasher, I'm not going to tell you much about, but Light Song 
my cat is named after Light Song. Light Song is a god in the neighboring kingdom who is trying to find his purpose as a god. It's fantastic. I absolutely love this book with all of my heart. There are so many amazing characters in here. It's a magic system all braced, based on color and breath, and it's phenomenal. Highly suggest picking up this book if you haven't, especially if you've read any Brandon Sanderson books and you haven't read this one yet, you need to do it. Next up is a newer to me favorite. I've only read this like maybe two years ago for the first time. And that is Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Morellier. Essentially, this is this first book is a Six Swans retelling, but it is beautiful. It is steeped in Irish and Scottish folklore and tales, and it is full of fae. It is a fantastic fantasy novel. So I strongly suggest picking this one up. April from over April Sarah is the one who initially recommended this to me, and I'm so glad I took her up on the recommendation. It is absolutely fantastic. This is part of the Seven Waters series. She's been doing a read-along all year of this series, and so I've gotten further in the series than I ever have, but I'm still behind from where they're at. But anyways, I do strongly suggest picking up Daughter of the Forest because it is a fantastic novel. Next up is a book I plan on rereading here soon, and that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I might even pick this up for the current round of Tome Topple. This is essentially about two wizards who are in charge of creating this beautiful magical circus, and it is a wonderful journey. This is such an atmospheric read. I did not feel like this was over 500 pages. It, this went so smoothly and so well, and the competition aspect of it is just amazing. I really like the characters, and I just, I love it. I think you guys should really check out The Night Circus if you haven't. This is one of Sam from over at Thoughts on Tome's favorite books as well. She's the one who got me to read it. Absolutely love and adore it. Next up, we have a fantasy novel that I read earlier this year, and that is Duskfall by Christopher Husberg. This is essentially a dark fantasy meets Jason Bourne kind of story. So we end up with this male character who gets found, doesn't really know who he is. They give him a name. They give him a purpose. People come chasing after him, and pieces start to slowly fall into place. This is definitely one of those fantasy where they slowly trickle and give you the knowledge rather than big info dumps, which I really appreciate, and... The magic system is really interesting in here because you're either born with it or you can basically take drugs and become addicted to taking the drugs to be experience the magic. It's a really interesting concept. So there is a huge talk about lots of things within this novel. This is only like two years old. It's a current running series. There's three books out in it so far, but I'm absolutely loving it. So definitely check out Duskfall. The next one on this list is a classic. It's one that's very daunting and intimidating to a lot of people. I have read this, the unabridged version, mind you, and that is Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. This is one of the most beautiful stories ever told, in my opinion. I absolutely love Les Miserables, and reading this beefy monster has been one of my greatest reading feats to date. This is the longest book I have ever read. Yeah, it's 1,415 pages. And this is a beautiful story about tragic people and the tragic life that they live in late seven, in the French Renaissance resistance period. But it is so good. You will have characters that you love. None of your characters are safe. You don't know who's alive by the end. It's an amazing story. This is definitely a character-driven story. You will definitely read about how dirty the city of Paris is, so be forewarned before you dig into this one, but the story is so worth it that it's worth going through some of that rough stuff to get to the goods. I believe the abridged version is still technically a tome as well, so I do suggest picking up Les Miserables when you get a chance. Next up is one of the booktube darlings, and that is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Now this duology, this is so shiny, I'm trying to be careful with my lights here. This duology is fantastic. It has some elements of Elantris, but essentially we're following a boy named Laszlo Strange who has this obsession with the city of Weep. He becomes essentially a librarian in a sense and then gets sent on this quest to Weep to gain some discovery on it. It is so much more than that. That is like the briefest of brief descriptions of this, but I think it's better to go in a little bit blind to this story and just enjoy it for what it is. Lainey Taylor's are Lainey Taylor's writing is very lyrical and very flowery, so if you're not into flowery writing, you're not going to like this series, so stay clear. But I do think her writing is beautiful in the series. I think her descriptions are lovely. The core story is really, really good. Muse of Nightmares, like, sealed the deal for this duology for me. 
This first one I kind of hemmed and hawed about, but Muse of Nightmares just closed the deal for me. I got You get to know a lot more about the world in Muse of Nightmares, so if you tried Strange the Dreamer and were kind of on the fence about it, read Muse of Nightmares. I do. I liked Muse of Nightmares a lot. I gave this a 4.5, but I gave Muse of Nightmares an easy 5. So, anyways, know that, and I do love this series. I su strongly suggest it. And last but not least on this list is a little bit of a less popular epic fantasy series, and that is the Lycanius Trilogy, the first book being The Shadow of What Was Lost. This is a... It's been a minute since I've read this first book. But essentially we're following a small cast of characters as they're navigating this world. In the beginning, the magic school that these three teenagers, I guess you could say, almost adults, are maybe they're college age. I don't remember. It's been a minute. But the school that these three are attending is essentially attacked. But um, a couple of them get a tip to escape. So they escape and one is left and survived and they don't remember anything that happened. And so it's all, it's got this mystery as well as this amazing magic system. And it's, it's best to go into this a little bit blind, but no, it's an epic fantasy. It's wonderful. I, it's very well written. I really enjoyed the audiobook for this. It's narrated by one of my favorite narrators, Michael Kramer, who tends to do a lot of epic fantasy. So if this size is daunting to you, I suggest picking up the audiobook for this one because the audiobook was really great for this one. That's essentially how I digested the story the first time, and I think it's really, really good, so strongly recommend. So friends, those are the 10 reads that I would recommend for this upcoming round of Tome Topple. If you have any questions about any of these books, I would be happy to answer them down in the comments. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Shay. Welcome, thanks for stopping by. I would love it if you would subscribe and click the little bell icon so you know when to come hang out with me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.